continues in Vermont after the hurricane, and cameras are a problem with King Courts. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm your anchor, Michelle Seven. Starting with local news tonight. We revisit a story that has been covered by Free King TV in a previous episode. The camera ban in the King court system is being challenged once again by journalists and federal rulings alike. The Federal First Circuit Court of the United States struck a blow to wiretapping laws in regard to how they affect public servants. The decision states, is there a Constitution ally protected right to videotape police carrying out their duties in public? Basic First Amendment principles, along with case law from this and other circuits, answer that question unambiguously in the affirmative. Last week, Pete Nadamo went into the Superior Court in Keene and had this interaction while trying to inform the bailiffs of the recent ruling. That just says, I don't care what that says. Get the camera out of here so or you're going to be arrested. This is a, this is Well, sir, I brought you a little ruling that states. Uh, I, I don't have care what the ruling states. Get the camera out of here, or you'll be arrested. Sir, this states Get that. Get the camera out of here, or you'll be arrested. I understand that, sir. I've, I just can just show you the first a court of Glick. Can I have a deputy up here, please? That just says. I don't care what that says. Get the camera out of here, sir, or you're going to be arrested. This is, a, this is a ruling from the First Circuit. Sir, I just wanted to talk about Turn it. around and leave. Turn around and leave. I'd like well, turn had... around and leave. Sir, can I, can I show you this? Just turn around and leave. Can I show you this? You want to be arrested? No, I don't. That's why I want to get out of here. I'm sure this is a court order. I don't care what the court order is. I've got a deputy coming in here, and if you don't get out of here, you're going to be arrested. Uh, well, for a little background, Keene District Court and Superior, which is behind me, have both adopted a plan banning cameras and cell phones and any electronic equipment from being brought into the court. But the recent ruling by Glick clearly states that it is a constitutional right to record public officials uh, and that Glick's rights were violated when that happened. So they're violating my rights by trying to remove this. Um, it says a reasonable defendant would understood that his conduct violated the plaintiff's constitutional rights when they took Glick and arrested him. Um, it says here, in line with these principles, we have previously recognized that videotaping of public officials is an exercise of First Amendment liberties. And uh, obviously that guy does not care. So, do some follow-up. And Jason Talley of Talley TV went into the same court this past Friday and was arrested for having a camera. He is here to talk to us about the ruling and to share what happened to him. Jason is joined by Hacket Courser. Jason, how was your experience? Well, my experience started on a Friday morning when I went to uh, film a trial. I've uh, filmed in courtrooms all over New Hampshire, um, and I've started having problems in uh, Keene Superior and District Court where they uh, seem to uh, not like cameras, uh, which is really unfortunate. Uh, the Glick decision was really important to a lot of us people who want to hold government uh, uh, more transparent. Here's some quotes. This is from... A, a judge, and it was signed off by a, a three-judge uh, three um, panel. It says, a citizen's right to film government officials, including law enforcement officers, in the discharge of their duties in a public space is a basic, vital, and well-established liberty safeguarded by the First Amendment. And I totally agree. I think it's important to uh, keep government officials um, on the record as much as possible, and uh, they treated me pretty poorly when I was trying to hold them accountable. Now, with this ruling, I noticed that uh, the ruling with the Glick was in mass. Does that, would that hold for New Hampshire as well? Absolutely. It's the uh, first district, and that covers um, New Hampshire and all the states that surround it. Okay. Um, and so this is a federal court that made that decision. And, and our little courts here in Keene decided that they weren't going to honor that? Well, um, I mean, well, it's not just, uh, this is just one opinion by a court that, mm -hmm. um, so, 
uh, let's say somebody were to get arrested uh, in the superior court and they were to uh, sue the people that put their uh, hands on the peaceful journalist, uh, it could go up to the district one court and so they could hear it. So mm -hmm. it is um, in the chain to, uh, to get justice from a, a system that increasingly you don't see justice Now you from. are arrested for this and how long were you in jail? Um, I was in there for about three days. Uh, started for having a camera in a court? Yes, uh, and it was just not, it wasn't even the courtroom, it was the lobby because I was going to... Um, Don't they video record this stuff? Right, they <laughs> the government, that's a good point, the government has cameras everywhere. Um, and actually the camera that I had on me is about the, the size of my thumb uh, and it's also used by law enforcement to uh, keep their interactions with the public uh, more transparent. Hmm. Now are you going to do anything about this? Um, I, th I think I will do a few things about that. Uh, first of all, they have their courts uh, mm -hmm. where people don't seem to get justice, but I'll be taking this case to the court of public opinion. Uh, and so I'm a videographer. Uh, Tally.tv is my website. You go there now and you independent can... Independent media? Um, I'm, I try to be very independent. And yes, I, I'm, I try to report on, uh, on things that are, are not covered uh, by mainstream media. And uh, they don't seem to care about um, the restrictions that are being put on, but everybody should care. I mean, First Amendment freedoms are, there's a reason um, that the founders uh, made this the First Amendment. It's a very vital freedom, especially when um, in courtrooms, because they have a lot of power, as we're seeing. There's no, there's laws actually in New Hampshire that say it is A-OK -okay to um, photograph documents. Uh, and so I was at the clerk's window um, to uh, get a motion so I could record uh, in the courtroom and so I like to take photographs, I like to document everything, my interactions mm -hmm. um, with public servants and uh, that's when I was uh, assaulted by uh, two men. They uh, were bailiffs, I guess for the Superior Court. Uh, I was handcuffed and at that point um, I didn't want to assist in my own kidnapping so I dropped to my knees and then I sat down uh, and then one of the bailiffs was actually the bailiff that was featured. Um, He's in, been grouchy lately. Yeah, it was the same same bailiff that was um, barking at uh, a demo. He grabbed the handcuffs and uh, dragged me. Uh, there, there's still marks on my arms. I see, you're all bruised up. I am, yeah, bruised wow. up from that. Dragged me into an elevator, took me downstairs where the uh, sheriff's department is located, and um, the four of those men uh, put me in a room, uh, one of their holding cells, uh, I was still handcuffed and laid me down on the bench and uh, in the process one of the um, law enforcers kicked me in the ribs uh, and for this is for video recording uh, in a government building so uh, they don't want any accountability they don't want any transparency and I and a lot of other people are bothered by that and I think we're gonna see more um, more taking place I think that's a great idea uh, they do need to be held accountable um, and when something does go on there, their surveillance is magically erased, like uh, with the Thomas Ball thing. Right. Well, I, I hope mean that was magically erased. Yeah. So uh, recently in Keene, I was on, on a previous um, episode of Free Keene TV, and uh, with the Roz, Ryan, and Derek, when they went around to all the different to bureaucracies in the city of Keene, it was also a good test to video uh, record uh, in each one. And to their credit, the city of Keene. Um, had no problem recording the, the uh, police department in Keene, didn't have any problem recording. It's uh, some, for some reason, the courts uh, in the town, including the uh, uh, Superior Court, um, I was threatened that day also. Well, they've been messing up a lot lately. They don't want that on camera. Um, <laughs> I think people should ask themselves, what don't they want on video? What are, mm -hmm. are, are they hiding something? I mean, what is wrong with the public uh, having a right to know? It's, uh, it's enshrined in founding documents, it's uh, in state law. Um, so we're going to pursue this. I'm obviously motivated. I want justice um, and I don't think I can get that through um, their system. So uh, we'll take it to the court of public opinion and we'll see you know, what, uh, what we can get changed. Good for you, Jason. And Thank I'm you. glad you could join us again this week. Thanks. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. I'm glad you're out in time. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be here. Great. Michelle. Well, Vermont is still reeling from the effects of Hurricane Irene. Many people suffered property damage. In some cases, pieces of houses ended up in the rivers and lakes. Friends of Free Keen TV, Andrew and James, traveled to Vermont to help with cleanup efforts. They took along a video camera and captured this footage. 
They had planned to help pull trash out of a lake in Wilmington, Vermont, when they came upon some county sheriff's deputies guarding their ramp to the water's edge. Their conversation with the deputies turned interesting when it was found out how the sheriff's departments in that area are pri private companies that work for contracts. I was there the day, uh, three days before, and we were all um, cleaning up, and, um, and it was amazing. As you can see here, there are homes that are just lifted off of that, their foundation and roads out and bridges out. It's atrocious, and we were told it's a federal matter. No volunteers. You guys talked to Mark over there from the marina? I've talked to him, yeah. yeah. They did a lot of cleaning. Yeah, I know, and I went in a few days and yeah. actually cleaned up. He's closed today. Yeah. Well, I guess Trans Canada said they were going to put the. Uh, Trans Canada's the owner of the lake? Owns well, the lake, yeah. Okay. And they're going to, he said they're, uh, they're thought they're may, they may have a commercial guy come in to clean up. Okay. Which I don't know what they would do. We, way we were figuring is if they had like a barge with a clamshell thing on it, they could. I think Trans Canada would pay somebody to, to block the ramp then. Well, they are. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, that's why we're here. We get paid by Trans Canada. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sheriff's departments over here work, don't work, uh, they work on contracts. Okay, so now I know. Tax dollars you want to go to? Trans Canada, it's a private agency yeah, paying for Trans Canada's yeah. paying for us. So you give tickets out too, or? We can if we want to, yeah. yeah. But we're not being paid to do that. We're yeah. paid to be here. How does that work? How can you give out tickets if you're privately funded? But we, we go to the same academy as everybody else. We have all the same powers as everybody else. But the Sheriff's Department is not funded by the state. Right. It's funded by the, however much. The sheriff rents us out, basically. So the state's out. not pushing you guys to get ticket revenue then, right? Right, no. <laughs> so you leave me alone then when I zip around the Yeah, trains. we don't, uh, it's, it's not a, uh, every time you see us not, like if a town hires us mm -hmm. for so many hours, they like to see some ticket revenue because that counteracts the money they're paying us. Yep. So, but, but other than that, you know, mainly we, the, the sheriff makes the money when we're doing traffic on jobs uh, I have to say I like that but I like that method a lot better yeah you're taking money directly out of my pocket <laughs> yeah but the thing is you know it's a, it's a business so the sheriff has to be a businessman and a politician yep. because he's elected yep <laughs> and then he hires all the deputies and yeah it's a weird quasi public private kind of deal yeah kind of that kind of deal all of his profit is what buys the pays for cars and gas and all that. But we still have all the same powers. We can go to the academy and stuff. We can arrest people and we can do all that. But that doesn't pay a whole lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> the sheriff don't make any money doing that. He makes money when we're working out doing construction jobs and security jobs. And that well, yeah, I mean, but it actually puts you in a position where you're actually serving people as opposed to... Oh, yeah. You know, we're actually... Yeah, or, yeah, we're not, we're not out here like just to enforce laws. We're basically... Like, we have a, we have a regular contract with this lake I mean, all, all summer long. Sheriffs that do not operate on stolen monies. What do you make of this, Heike? I love the idea, Michelle. Thank you. Um, what did What do you think about this? Um, so, if they're if they're not taking public money for this, then uh, what is their? Well, it's like a private contractor type thing. Mm -hmm. From from what I gather, this is what I hear. Um, sheriffs aren't employed by the state. They're well, they're subcontractors. Kind of like our Hunter North security. People hire them to do things. So what is their authority? Um, just based on that event or whatever's going on. Like with the cleanup, they have the authority to say, hey, we, we've got a handle on this. We're hired to do this, so let us do this. Okay, but uh, they still wear the same badge as a sheriff? I don't know. Mm -hmm. It looked like it. And so... Um, but I guess they don't really write tickets or anything like that because they're not paid to do that type of thing. So why were they there that day? Um, to assist in the cleanup. Oh, okay. And yeah. so how were they assisting in the cleanup? I don't know what they were doing right then, but um, I guess they've been cleaning. Oh, interesting. And they had any sheriffs to do that or people with badges? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't there that day. I had to work, unfortunately. But I guess... Um, Michelle uh, went down a few days before that with a group of her friends and they um, cleaned out or they started cleaning and they had a grand old time pulling stuff out of the lake and, and really helping out in Vermont. And then they went back to the same spot three days later and there were sheriffs there saying that they couldn't do that. 
Well, you know, and that's the the funny thing is that we were pulling out porta potties and you know. Uh, propane tanks and a lot of garbage and we were doing this voluntarily we went up there from New Hampshire on our own time and we weren't being paid and it happened to be a lake where we would ski at and so we felt some you know I felt some personal um, duty there to Mark Peterson who runs the marina there and people in the town were very grateful and really thankful and instead I understand this is um, owned by Trans Canada so Canada now owns the lake in New Hampshire. I don't really understand that, but um, just the fact that the uh, that these sheriffs. I mean, maybe you're not considering those to be coerced funds, but if the town is paying for them, well, the town is still a city government agency just because it's not federal or state. You know, it's it's, it's deriving that money from somewhere other than from their own pockets. But w what was their responsibility there? Their responsibility was to uh, make sure that no one got went onto the lake. So they turned those of us who went there voluntarily to clean up away. And why? Were they cleaning it's, up? No, they weren't cleaning up. They were. So they were like hired security. Exactly, and they wanted okay. to make sure that um, that no one uh, got onto the lake because it's dangerous. Well, okay. And they were professionals. They said the professionals are coming in and cleaning up. So, so they were looking out for. Public safety, they I guess. They were coming in. They hadn't been there yet? Correct. So they sent those of us away that were there and ready to go and volunteer our time and our efforts and what And not you. ask for anything in return just Correct. to help because you aren't trained professionals? Right. Well, and it's you do have to understand really with a lot of grab that. a hold of a porta potty that's like been smashed to bits and But then you have all the hazardous <laughs> waste stuff, you know, you don't know what's been in there. I mean, with yeah, a bunch but of I'm volunteering, stuff. and I'm not. I'm not holding anyone else accountable. And if it's hazardous waste, you want to get it out of there as soon as possible. That seem. is true. I don't know. Well, for this last segment, we are going to cover a topic outside the area. New York City is playing host to a massive peaceful resistance event. It is called Occupy Wall Street and consists of many individuals taking up residency on the street and areas around Wall Street. So much of what is going wrong with the economy is being blamed on the banks. Here police meet protesters with violence and thuggish tactics. Even still more peaceful occupations are taking place around the country with similar events starting up in Los Angeles, Kansas City, and Chicago. Take a, look, take a look at this video compilation of the New York event. Meanwhile, also from New York, the largest anti-Wall Street rally since the credit crunch happened yesterday. Thousands of workers and trade union leaders marched in anger over lost jobs, ruined lives, and they're demanding answers from the source of who they believe is responsible, who's the source of the trouble, the banks. The banks, the banks. We shall not pay for endless wars. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes. Men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think, and what to feel, who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle, use you as cannon fodder. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines. You are not cattle. You are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate. Only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. Soldiers, don't fight for slavery, fight for liberty! Because of the scams of Wall Street's fat cats, millions of Americans lost their homes. Millions more lost their jobs. It looks like a police station. What do all of them have in common? The feeling of outrage, a sentiment which has reached its peak in America.
Hey, think for yourself, guys. Badges don't grant extra rights. Intense footage. Jason, what is your take on the Occupy Wall Street event? I haven't actually been following it all that closely. I mean, I, why haven't I seen that in the newspapers yeah. or any anything other than this video clip? It's great that uh, you have independent media that's out there taking video. Uh, although, uh, from what I hear, there's been uh, uh, the internet has been dropped, like Wi-Fi in the area and um, wireless networks, so that they can't get like streaming video and photos out. They have to travel elsewhere Are they doing with a the media devices. Blackout? Well, um, by media blackout, you mean the media is just ignoring the story? Yeah. Um, I haven't heard or about are they it. Being like being told you would think. not to publish this. I don't know. I mean, who would tell them not to publish? I mean, it? this is pretty huge. I mean, this is <laughs> New York City, and there's like thousands and thousands of people yeah. protesting in the streets. I, but, like I, I, sixty or eighty people so far have been arrested. Is that right? Pretty so brutally. That's what I heard according. earlier. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty brutal footage uh, that we saw. This actually kind of got me up to speed Mass a little bit about what's going spraying. on. Um, but. You know, I, people are there for varying reasons. You can't say that they're, you saw some uh, pro-democracy signs, you saw some you know, anti-Wall Street signs. I know uh, Pete Ayer was on the scene. And, uh, and so, you know, they believe in open markets. And what uh, government does, I, mean, I would rather see these things in front of the White House um, or in front of government un institutions because it's only with uh, large governments that you can uh, create these corporations and these banks that are uh, quote too big to fail and they get to uh, bailouts uh, if these banks and other financial institutions had to operate in a truly free market you wouldn't see them uh, get so large um, and see so much anger so um, it's because of the size of government I would say that you're having uh, these problems and these these large bubbles that end up being popped and people being hurt there, were, there was a lot of people. I couldn't believe that and how I haven't seen it in anything. So um, I don't know if it's growing, if it's still building momentum. I heard earlier today that there's going to be a Boston event, a uh, Boston yeah. occupation, and so maybe it's happening all over um, the rest of the country. What exactly are they protesting? Well, that's just it. I mean, uh, each, pers each person has their own unique agenda. I mean, I'm sure you have some people that are there. Uh, because they would like to see uh, you know, further the green agenda or a more socialist agenda um, or so it's just a bunch of protests put together into one big area uh, I've followed protest uh, for a while and that's what you normally have you just have people that show up maybe around a, a common cause like an anti-war protest um, so what is this common cause um, well I would say a lot of it is probably anti-capitalism but like I said you do have people there in solidarity who are um, uh, market anarchists or uh, believe in, in free markets so there's a lot to protest on Wall Street don't get me wrong but um, it's mostly because in my opinion their collusion with the government um, and their kind of their symbiotic relationship okay how how much longer is this going to go on? I'm not an expert in uh, in any of this. Well, uh, I was just in a cage for the last three days. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> you're not up to speed with everything yet. Um, do you know anyone that's down there right now? Well, mentioned uh, from the Keene area. There's a Pete, and uh, there's yeah. also uh, a Tommy Bazingo who are covering it, and they got the uh, footage back so that uh, Free Keen TV could broadcast it tonight. That was lovely of them. Which was P awesome. Pete and uh, Tommy Mazingo are in fact down there. Um, it's been going on for actually eight days. Nine, today's Monday, so a week ago Saturday. So it's been nine days that people wow. have been there. And people, you mentioned Jason, the um, you know doing this in front of public buildings. In Chicago, they are doing this in front of the Federal Reserve. And although, as you mentioned, there are people that are more of the leftist agenda, et cetera, um, the idea that the banks are have been bailed out by uh, the United States government and that the United States government has in fact loan loaned hundreds of millions of dollars to foreign countries and um, with with essentially our money if you're a taxpayer then um, people are protesting that and so and you know I also saw a lot of kids you know young college graduates who are looking at the hundred thousand dollars of uh, school debt that they have and yet there are no jobs available so it is pretty you know people are fed up and um, and uh, and they're they not taking it anymore. This would be a good place to protest. Public yeah. education is certainly the, uh, an upcoming bubble. Um, I mean, we s we've seen it in the internet and uh, and banks and the housing market. Um, but 
you know, the government make, makes it easy to borrow money uh, to go to, uh, to get higher education. And uh, these pieces of paper are going to become uh, more and more worthless when uh, governments uh, are they're going to fail. Uh, they're getting too big. They're already stretched way beyond their means. And uh, even if they taxed people at 100% right now, they couldn't pay off the deficit. So people, um, it would probably be a good idea to learn vocational skills or, or things that can actually um, uh, produce something or uh, put food on the table rather than uh, just get a paper degree. I hate to say that's a little straight talk. <laughs> so, Jason, I'm going to change the subject a little bit here. Okay. It has been a um, couple weeks since the unofficial meeting at City Hall uh, about the going ons in the s in Central Square d downtown Keene. Now you went to that meeting, right? I did go to that meeting. Yeah, so I, I did, and I thought it was a good start to, you know. Um, having the community really come together and voice their concerns because, you know, my, my view of it is uh, so many people are so angry about everything that's been going on down there. Um, but I think instead of putting blame on different groups, they, everyone needs to realize that we're just one big community and well, stop labeling everyone and placing blame. And um, since then, I've um, heard that like some of my neighbors have gone down there and they've baked cookies. Um, down at Central Square? Yeah, and they, so they've done things like that and well said, hey, if you've done something nice, you can have a cookie. Um, people have cleaned up down there. People have encouraged them to do other activities besides screaming on Central Square. Uh, well, so have you noticed a change? I've been hanging out in Central Square for um, I don't know, about probably about three, four weeks now, especially since uh, Free Speech Friday uh, mm -hmm. started there, and then the uh, Live For Your Dance uh, events that have been going on. And primarily, I've seen uh, nothing but nice folks. Now, I know there's been some, some issues there, and I, I think that's a great reason why Free Speech Friday for the community to come out after four and to get together, address these concerns. Uh, we did have a microfo microphone, now there's a megaphone, uh, where people can just talk about um, issues that uh, they see that there could be improvements, problems in the community, if they want to redress their grievance. I try to speak every week. Um, that's what I want to see, the community getting together, because it's important. But it have, probably you, have you actually seen a change in the past two weeks? I've seen a change, actually. I've seen a change in that there's a, um, a yarn store owner who has volunteered to donate 10 uh, yarn to me at 10% discount so I can teach those kids how to crochet. Cool. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. And as always, tune in at 7 p.m. on Mondays for the latest episode of Free Keen TV. You can contact Free Keen TV at the email address of tv at I'm Michelle Seven saying goodnight and peace be with you and yours. <laughs>